Hey everyone and welcome. In the main strategy, we watched how Bjergsen was able to gain a lead and then he made a few poor choices which threw that lead. So we asked you to submit your gameplay of the mid game where we analyzed both your ability to snowball a lead while also breaking down general macro mistakes that most players make in Platinum and below. So let's get into it. In this game, we have Vladimir in Platinum. He's up against a mid lane Nasus and has a huge lead of 2400 gold, so it's safe to say that he's set up to carry this game. He's in the mid lane right now with Caitlyn on the red buff, Shen passing top and even Thresh on the Rift Herald. Do you think that Vladimir is in the right lane at this time? So ideally Vlad would be top with Shen bot and Kate mid. The reason for this is ideally you want your ADC and support in the middle while you collect or pressure a side wave which we'll talk more about soon. But you want your ADC and support in the middle so that you can enable your support to have access to both sides of the map to fight for vision while also putting your vulnerable ADC in the shortest lane. Anyway, with Vlad mid, he decides to let this big red wave push towards him to set up a freeze. This doesn't look too bad in the 1v1 since he just denied Nasus an entire wave, but can you tell why this was actually a huge mistake? So the reason this is so horrible is because by freezing, while his team is on the map and creating pressure topside, he's actually given the enemy a potential numbers advantage for free. By freezing, he keeps himself in the lane and doesn't pressure anyone else to go mid. So the enemy can win with numbers by making a play elsewhere on the map and sure enough, they end up collapsing onto Caitlyn in a 1v3. Vladimir's response to this is to immediately start shoving mid lane. The problem now is that they no longer have their ADC alive, so they can't really get any value and only look for tower damage before the enemy rotates from bot lane to defend mid and top. For that reason, being this close to the tower for auto attacks is a big mistake. He knows for sure that the enemy Pike, Tristana and Kane are most likely coming for him from the bot side. Sure enough, they arrive and Vladimir chooses to engage instead of backing off, resulting in a thrown teamfight. While that freeze was an obvious blunder, the main issue stemmed from the initial lane assignments. We said earlier that Vladimir should have been heading topside with Shen botside with Caitlyn in the middle. That would have been ideal so that they can secure Rift Herald with Vlad there for a team fight and Shen ready with his ultimate or teleport. However, the second best choice would have been for Vladimir to go bot lane which would have allowed Caitlyn to go mid lane instead. This would mean that the fed Vladimir would pressure the bot wave and be way more difficult for the enemy to shut down than a lone Caitlyn. Having said that, you may now be wondering, what if you also play in a mobile carry like Orianna? Should you be going for a side wave to let your bot lane go mid? So the question that you need to ask yourself is what is your champion capable of when it comes to side lane pressure? Your champion will either look to collect waves or to look to collect waves and pressure. Orianna is immobile and can get 1v1 by most side lane champions, so she would look to just collect waves that are pushed towards her side of the map. However, she wouldn't push them back into enemy territory in most cases since she's vulnerable to getting collapsed on with no escapes, similar to Velkos, Syndra, Vega, and Lux. However, if you're a champion who can successfully pressure side lanes, think Vladimir, Talon, Zed, Katarina, Echo, Akali, etc., who can at least win 1v1s or have strong mobility, then you can collect waves and also pressure the side wave before going back to group with your team perhaps in the middle. So as a general rule, you would look to collect a wave when it's in this area and then retreat to your team if you're a weak side lane champion. If you can pressure, then you would go beyond this point and push the wave towards their tower and then group with your team while the enemy has to deal with that side wave and then you can potentially win with numbers when grouping with your team. And we just want to quickly point out that if you are looking to pressure a side lane, then you wouldn't want to go to the side lane and pressure if there isn't a wave in the collection zone, since it would just waste a ton of time walking over there with no minions to collect along the way. You would much rather let your opponent push it out towards you while you're grouping with your team with a numbers lead and then go and collect that wave and pressure. 
After resetting, Vlad is now pathing mid again with the Caitlyn heading into the bot side jungle. This is fine since Vlad gets a wave while Caitlyn does red, however Vladimir sticks around in the mid lane to push another wave all the way to the tier 2 tower. This is the wrong macro choice again because he lets Nasus pressure a side wave for free when he could be side laning into the Nasus, out pushing him and then securing a numbers advantage when roaming after pushing, which in this case could easily secure the dragon. The result is that Vlad got a couple of mid waves, stole enemy raptors, and lost around 40 seconds of tempo from being able to deny the push from Nasus. He heads bot side to collapse on Nasus with Evelyn, wasting a ton of time on the scuttle crab in the process. Once they finally reach Nasus, Thresh is also on the wave, sending 3 bot to kill him, again leaving Caitlyn totally exposed in the middle lane. Somehow Caitlyn solos the cane, so it ends up working out, but this was totally left to chance because of the poor macro choices from Vladimir. If Vlad went bot here, instead of here, he could have had the wave pushed all the way to the tier 2 tower, and then roam with his team to safely kill the low mid tower and secure dragon. A play with a super high chance of working out. Instead, he went to the bot lane really late, where Kate could have easily died again, and then they would have traded a 3 man collapse on Tenasus for their ADC. With this information in mind, let's move on to the next game as we analyse more common low elo mistakes. This time we have Zed in gold elo and he has a 1600 gold lead over his opponent Mordekaiser and has scored 3 kills up to this point, putting him 3-0. and zero. The enemy Yumi and Lucian are split pushing bot and have nearly killed Zed's inhib tower. It's times like this when the enemy has serious split push pressure and your team can just fall apart in map movements. Zed's response is to recall and deal with it, which is the right call because his team is not reacting. However, Yorick then decides to do a late teleport to the bot tower, leaving Zed in base and now he must decide which lane to go to. If you were Zed, where would you go and why? So the right call is to go top. This is because Yumi and Lucian aren't going to stay this far up with Yorick's response and Zed is now missing for them, so it's too risky to stay. Top lane is free to farm, making it the most efficient choice to spread gold across the team. There's no objectives to fight over, so it's an easy choice to go top and farm. With Zed making the mistake of following Yorick to deal with Yumi Lucian, he wastes a ton of time as they just pull back and now he has to share a wave with the Yorick. This then leads to Zed wasting a ton of time walking through the jungle, placing a weak ward in an area that he shouldn't currently be in. In contrast, he could have picked up the top wave in the collection zone and pressured that side lane gaining a ton of solo farm and forcing a response from the enemy this entire time. 40 seconds later, let's take a look at the result of Zed's decision to not path top lane. Okay, so that was pretty devastating. Zed had a lead, he tried to force something which resulted in Lucian getting a quadra kill. Let's go back and understand why this went so wrong. First, the approach to the teamfight doesn't play to Zed's strengths in any way whatsoever as an assassin. Zed's approach to a teamfight should be from a flanking position, where he approaches the backline and causes chaos by trying to all in a squishy. This is much easier to do after a fight has started, meaning that Zed shouldn't be the initiator in most situations. This is true for most assassins. As an assassin, your macro rhythm will typically consist of pushing side waves and then looking to join your teammates to either take objectives or teamfight. The enemy team sends someone to pick up a side wave that you've pushed, then you teamfight from a flank with a numbers advantage or take objectives. That's how you want it to look. In this case, Zed didn't push a side wave and is just grouped with his team. This means the numbers are even in a 5v5 and he tries to force by engaging, overextending into the jungle and just dying. The enemy team had hugely superior positioning in this case as they funneled into the jungle one by one, but in any case, going for a straight up 5v5 is usually a coin flip. You usually only want to take these big fights with a numbers advantage or a health lead to guarantee a winning fight. 
It's also worth noting that if you are the third player on your team, then your teammates will usually fully trust in bad calls like this and get themselves all killed. After resetting, we see Zed go to defend mid lane from Trindamir, which is the correct call to save the tower, as he's the first one to respawn. Let's pause it here, and can you tell us what's wrong with the current lane assignments? Okay, so I hope that we all spotted the Morgana support bot lane as probably the worst lane assignment that we've seen all week. She should be mid right now with Vayne, securing vision as we talked about in the Vladimir game with their Caitlyn Thresh. Yorick should have puffed to the bot lane, allowing Zed to puff top after clearing mid. But this is a low elo solo queue game, so how should Zed get these lane assignments even if he knew what the correct macro choices are? Well, if Zed path top here after clearing this wave, Bane would more than likely swap lane, hopefully going to mid. By typing in chat and pinging, then he could increase the chance of this happening. But the one thing that is most likely to happen is Vayne will leave the top lane, securing Zed a solo lane that he can pressure and get the assassin macro rhythm that we talked about earlier. Instead, he goes into the jungle and starts killing wolves, and then Yorick gets caught mid and dies. If Vayne Morg had been mid, then they would have cleared the wave much more safely with both side laners generating pressure for their team. This ends up costing them an additional tower. Jumping ahead a couple of minutes, we see Zed respawn and once again must decide where to go. In this case, he finally decides to pressure a side wave, but picks the bot lane, which is actually the wrong choice. He should be pathing towards his teammates Morgana and Xin Zhao to secure vision around the bearing objective, and then look to pressure top lane while sending Yorick to the bot lane. This is because the enemy Trindamir is most likely going to keep pushing bot, which Zed simply cannot deal with. He can make an educated guess that Trindamir would go bot because he's been doing it the entire game, which most split pushes do, because bot lane is the furthest lane from the baron, which is where most mid to late game action is, leaving them free to draw more pressure across the map. As we can see, he has to leave the bot lane as soon as he sees Trindamir, wasting a ton of time and forcing his Vayne to recall to deal with Trindamir instead of being able to stay in the middle lane. They do end up picking up some random kills in the mid lane, but Vayne also dies bot side. Now, after analyzing Vladimir and Zed's games, we did see examples of them making poor macro choices, but things not going too badly regardless like Vladimir collapsing on the pushing Nasa's bot when he incorrectly chose to stay mid, and he actually scored a kill which opened up the potential to secure Ocean Dragon right after. Or Zed going bot when he should have went top, and then randomly scoring two kills in the mid lane, leaving his Vayne to die to the Trindamir, going two for one. But the problem with these choices, regardless of if the outcome was positive or negative, was that they were totally unpredictable. Therefore, you couldn't control the outcome. For example, if Vladimir had gone bot lane when he was supposed to, he could have had Nasus push to his tier 2 before pulling back to a guaranteed Ocean Dragon, a totally controlled positive from the correct choice. And if Zed had correctly chosen to go top instead of mid, telling Yorick to go bot to deal with the Trindamir, then he would have had the bot lane controlled. Zed could then pressure the top lane and then roam towards his team in the center, collapsing on the mid lane with a numbers advantage, matching his goals as an assassin. Alright, so that was a bunch of macro information. Hopefully this guide helped break down some of the most common low elo macro mistakes which drives games into complete chaos. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.